Good afternoon, everyone. The LENDOP board meeting is now in session. Can I get a roll call? For President Griffin. Present. For Member Dawson. Absent. Um, Board Vice President Hanna. Absent. For Member Morris. Present. For Member Williams Wolford. Absent. Um, Secretary Taylor. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. If I can get everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm sorry, Mrs. Griffin, not done. We forgot. Board Member Alexander, present. <laughs> yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now, if we could have a moment of silence. Next up, we have Spotlight on Success. Thank you. Good evening, board members, community members, teachers and staff. Thank you all for being here. Spotlight on success. Today, we are going to be spotlighting one of our very own teachers, Miss Ebony Jones. Take it away. Thank you, Mrs. Opadi Sephora for the introduction. Good evening, board members, Dr. Jackson, staff and community. My name is Ebony Jones, a proud Lindout fifth grade teacher. With a nomination by Dr. Jackson and Mrs. O, I was selected by Teach Plus of Illinois as a teacher leader and trained, and still being trained, to facilitate our LENDOP affinity group to retain and recruit teachers of color. Teach Plus is known for working with teacher leaders. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. O. Um, Teach Plus is known for working with teacher leaders to find solutions to the most important issues facing students, teachers, equity in education. ISB partnered with the Regional Office of Education, Teach Plus of Illinois, and the Golden Apple Foundation to bring this initiative to life. We are making history because this is the first for Illinois with the support of the state superintendent, um, I am honored and thrilled to bring together our LINDOP educators of color to build a safe belonging space, a supportive community, examine our current issues that are facing us in the teaching profession, and make recommendations to address those issues. This initiative is to improve teacher retention and to help meet Illinois' high demand for educators. We kicked off our infinity group in October Nine teachers and paraprofessionals of color were present. We met off campus after, um, after school, and we will meet once a month to support and keep our teachers of color in education. When our teachers feel supported, our students are supported, and in the end, the students are the reason why we are here. Thank you so much. No, but congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. How many people are in the um, cohort, I guess? Um, right now we have nine. Um, there are four more that wanted to come but could not make it on the date. 
um, we had the staff in volleyball, staff versus the girls volleyball that day, and a couple of our educators were playing in that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Any further questions or discussion? Okay, next up is public comment. Were there any? There are none. Uh, for your request, I see there are none. Next up is upcoming events and correspondence. That is normally handled by, okay. Okay, apparently there is nothing. And if you would just read the items that are listed. Next up, we have the fun part. The induction of our Miss Alexander, our newest board member. If you join me at the podium. Everything. Ms. Alexander, if I can get you to repeat after me, hold your right hand up. I, Jeannie Alexander, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the member of the Board of Education or Board of School Directors of Edmund F. Linda School District 92 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead and you can read your report now. Hi, Jeannie Alexander. You wanna? I, Jeannie Alexander, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the member of the Board of Education or Board of School Directors of Edmund E. Lindop School District 92 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the law of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. I further swear or affirm that I shall respect taxpayers' interest by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I further swear or affirm that I shall respect taxpayers' interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that discussions can be made only by a majority, excuse me, and decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education or Board of School Directors, as the case may be, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. As part of the Board of Education or Board of School Directors, as the case may be, 
I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcome, outcomes, and set the course for the 2022 and 2023 school year. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for the 2022-2023 school year. I shall assist in establishing a structure and environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement. All conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement in all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community school or school to advance the vision of engage the vision for engagement. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students in our community school or schools to advance the vision for engagement. And I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district towards fulfilling the vision of the board. The board has created fostering excellence for every student in the area of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. And I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision the board has created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Thank you. You are now an official board member. Thank you. Maybe. Okay. Moving along, we have the consent agenda. Would someone like to make a motion? Board member Tanya Taylor. I recommend approval for the Lindop School District 92 payroll for October 18, 2022 through November 15, 2022. 14. Starting over. Thank you. Tanya Taylor. I make a motion that the board approves Linda School District 92 payroll October 18, 2022 through November 14, 2022, in the amount of $447,000. $903.33 activity account reconciliation for October 2022 accounts payable for October 19, 2022 through November 14, 2022 in the amount of $235,107.18 regular open session meeting minutes for October 18, 2022 regular closed session minute meetings for October 18th, 2022, special open session minute meeting, meeting minutes for October 28th, 2022, and special open session meeting minutes for October 29th, 2022. Thank you, can I get a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Thank you, can I get a roll call? 
Board President Griffin? Yay. Board Member Alexander? Yay. Board Vice President Hannah? Absent. Absent. Board Member Dawson? Absent. Board Member Morris? Yay. Board Secretary Taylor? Yay. Board Member Williams Wolford? Yay. Thank you. The move passes. The motion passes on a voice vote. Next is old business. Uh, Mr. Ballantyne with an update on buildings and grounds. Good evening, Board of Education, community, and staff. I want to update you on the building and ground department. Uh, this is our schedule, upcoming schedule right now. Uh, we are doing fall cleanup around the building. We're renterizing all our summer equipment, uh, getting ready for the winter, starting up all our winter equipment and tuning it up. Over Thanksgiving break, we plan on painting uh, the boiler room floor, so a slip resistant floor. During the Christmas break, we're gonna be doing floor care throughout the building. We're gonna change all the HVAC air filters and do a deep cleaning inside the main office and district office. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussions? This is some of the life safety work that we got coming up. Uh, this is the masonry work. Uh, we had a meeting with our architects on May 12th. Uh, they was back on the facility on November 1st doing a field work, assessing the work that needs to be done. We plan on having out these bid packages in December that include posting it inside the local newspapers. Then we'll have a pre-bid meeting uh, we'll do reference checks on all the, on the lowest bid, and we'll bring this back to you guys in January for board approval. We're looking to have this work again in May and July 2023. Uh, during this time, the West Park a lot will be completely closed through June and July. And due to the noise of the construction we're going to be having, we're going to relocate the summer school into the middle school wing. Another update to the facility is we're going to get the chiller replaced soon. We brought this to the board in October. It was approved. We expect the chiller to arrive in September 2023. And that's also when the work will begin. Uh, There's a 10-day process to remove the old chiller and install the new chiller. At this time, there will be no AC in the building until spring of 2023. That's when we start up the chiller and test the system and make sure everything is functional. Any questions? Yes. Silly question, but where's the chiller located? The chiller is located in uh, by the blacktop in the back of the building. It's enclosed in that brick area right there. Right off the sidewalk? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I have one question. Is there anticipated to be any problem with, you know, keeping the children comfortable during that time? Well, we, we're expecting, since that's kind of inside the fall weather, we're hoping we don't get any warm days. But like I said, once we start that right. work, it will be no AC inside the building for those, those months, those oh, two okay. months. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or concerns? If not, can we get a vote? Board President Griffin? Yay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, next, we have the presentation of the State of the District Administrative Team. Good evening, once again, board members, committee members, staff. Thank you all for being here. So, state of Linda. So let me just let you know that I've been doing evaluations, Mr. Kenobi and I, we've been doing formal and informal evaluations. And what I decided to do was look at our IER test scores as well as evaluations. How does it correlate? So what I found out based on non-tenured, um, 
looking at their student learning objective as well as the IER assessment. I had one grade five teacher who had 48% of her students at or above grade level. So what that means is 40, 48% is two times the average here at Linda. So I said to myself, what can I do in terms of the rest of the teachers rising to this occasion? Well, the SLO is a student learning objective. So what happens is that teachers know who their students are and what their students need in terms of the makeup in their classroom. Also, the teacher decides on what they need to do in order to leverage those students so that they can um, close the deficiencies and have them rise. So what this teacher did was that she looked at the IER blueprints and she was able to decipher what her students need, what her students, what the standards were, and she curtailed her student learning objective to that. She was able to see results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using that teacher as a teacher leader to make sure that all the other teachers are following her footsteps in terms of looking at the IER blueprint in order to close the deficiencies that the students have. So that's the first thing that I'm doing um, in terms of making sure that evaluations correlate to test scores. And then I have some good news about Linda, which Dr. Jackson is going to share. Okay. <laughs> all right, uh, Board of Education, thank you all um, so much. And thank you so much for the retreat and for pushing us to make sure that we are making decisions based upon data. So we do have some information that just came out on the uh, state report card. And if you uh, look at it, we'll see it has the growth and the scores from 2019, 2021, and then 2022. Yep, that was as large as we could have given this time. I'm sorry, I do see you. Okay, and so as we look at Linda, four proviso in English, language arts, we are at 25%. Out of proviso township, the highest um, one school was Hillside, and they're at 34%. But if you look back a little bit, you'll look at 2019, and you'll see that Lindot was at 27% after COVID. Mm. Uh, it went down, decreased significantly to 18%. And then for 2022, we see ourselves coming back around. So still nothing to be excited about, but we do need to celebrate small successes. And this is a small success. We were also able to maintain our commendable status as well. If you look over to the right side, the table is showing mathematics and Linda is at 14% for this um, year. Leader and proviso is Westchester District 92 and a half at 23%. But if we look at that uh, pattern or the trajectory of the scores, 2019, Linda was at 19%. COVID, we went down to 11 and now gradually going up slowly but moving in the right direction. And so without the fine tuning and the work that's being done now, uh, this may not have been possible. And so I really applaud the administrators for being in the classrooms because they are there all of the time, every day, making sure that this is monitored and making sure that teachers are doing exactly uh, what it is that they need to do for our children to make sure that they are successful and also having some tough conversations but it's good conversations because it's all wrapped up in support. Um, if we look here, um, go ahead. All right, good, thank you. And so what I was about to say, Mr. Ellis, you can you take it this? Oh, it was you, flip it down. All right, so uh, what I was about to say is that Lundop had 19%, then we went to 14, but if we look at Westchester, they began with uh, 28, they went down to 21 and now they're at 23. And so we're seeing um, and having conversations with other superintendents within Proviso, um, they really focus on the SEL. And so we're seeing where we are. And so, like I said, nothing to be celebrating, but this is, we're moving in the right direction. And so we're going to give you exactly what you expect and the taxpayers for sending us their children. So thank you. Did you, anyone have any questions about this slide? Okay, thank you. No. 
Was there anything else? Thank you, ladies. Is there more? Uh, uh. Good evening, Board of Education, community and staff. I apologize, Dr. Jackson. I thought that you had covered it pretty well in the previous slide, but this is the same exact information, but just broken down for LINDOP only as compared to the state. And it's what you see on the report card. So it's showing the math and the reading. It's exactly the numbers here, but it's showing it by color and focusing in just on LINDOP. Good evening, good evening board, staff and community. Um, so I'm presenting today on co-teaching. Um, so I've had the, I, I, you know, you guys know I'm fairly new here and had the opportunity to sit back and see, you know, where some things could have a little bit of improving and co-teaching was one of them. Um, so I analyzed everything and created three goals um, surrounding around co-teaching for this school year. Um, one, having um, all teachers, including our paraprofessionals, um, to have common plan periods. Um, I wanted to put emphasis on paraprofessionals because they are a very instrumental part of our school day. Um, the other one is, um, sorry, the goals, uh, the le I'm sorry, the lesson plans reflect um, co-teaching strategies. So over the summer, I did a professional development on co-teaching and, and the best practices. And so just making sure that now um, the teacher's lesson plans reflect those co-teaching strategies. And then the last one is just making sure that co-teaching is actually happening with fidelity. Um, so we have the two bodies in the classroom. A co-teaching is a special education teacher and a general education teacher in the classroom and in some instances is our, uh, uh, includes our paraprofessionals, um, but making sure that all of those resources and on the manpower in the room um, is being utilized. So um, based on those goals, I created benchmarks so we can have a way of progress monitoring these things. So the first benchmark we've already completed, which was by November that, um, paraprofessionals will also have a daily plan period, um, just as well as the general education teacher and the special education teacher at the same time. So they can help with um, planning and instruction. The second benchmark um, is in progress for December. And um, this, is, uh, is, this is gonna be an on ongoing thing beyond December, but for, um, teachers to write lesson plans that include those co-teaching models. And then the last part is, once again, just making sure um, that co-teaching is actually happening. So once the co-teaching is, a lot of it comes from the lesson plan. So we wanna make sure that you can tell me about it and then show me what you're telling me or at the school. And so, um, the very last is just the solutions. Like I said, the first one is already completed. I've created a schedule for paraprofessionals so they can also be part of um, collaborating and in instruction. The second one, like I said, is in progress, um, mo monitoring um, lesson plans. Us administrators, we all contribute to giving feedback to the staff on um, what we see, what we don't see, and, and just making sure that teachers are able to answer um, any questions or concerns we may have. Um, and then also administrators do sit in and during those plan periods to make sure those plan periods are happening, they're collaborative, and um, to address any questions that teachers may have. The last one is kind of in a research phase, and that's um, for our staff to see Blue Ribbon schools, because I know that is one of our pushes to be Blue Ribbon, but to go and visit a Blue Ribbon school to see what co-teaching is looking like there. Um, and then the last part of this benchmark would be to provide additional training. So as I stated, I did a professional development over the summer, but I would like to give additional doses and refreshers of co-teaching throughout the school year. So there'll be some follow-up and holding teachers accountable. 
Any questions? Good evening, Board of Education, uh, teachers, staff, and guests. Congratulations, Board Member Alexander, again. Much deserved and appreciated. I have a discipline update for October and November tonight. And again, all the all the work behind the scenes that goes on with the blue ribbon status and pushing uh, that initiative is, is a team effort here. And the results and the data shows our behavior is declining at rapid pace based on last year. Of course, based on last year, we had coming out of COVID, you know, we had different types of trauma and, and crises with children and staff. Uh, during October from previous year to this year, a 67% drop. Again, some of the notations is that we're looking at is looking at the multi-tiered systems of support. The work is with Ms. Kiefer, the SEL team, uh, teachers and staff, and looking at the tier one universal, tier two and tier three supports. And sometimes looking at the behavior intervention plans for the individual plans for the students, making sure that we're um, giving supports for those behaviors. But a lot of these behaviors are isolated that we're able to, they're not patterns. And one thing in terms of numbers as I go into November that I just want to consider is some of the numbers are up from previous year is because we looked at truancy tardies and absences differently this year, uh, being more proactive about reaching out to parents uh, with tardies, making it that work over the summer with parents as tardies as part of a group three code of conduct that was approved by the board. And, but it was a lot of work over the summer with parents to make that happen and going through the progression of discipline and letting parents know that tardies are, are substantial in terms of absences, especially if your child is five minutes late versus 35 minutes late. You know, a child that's late three times, you know, in a three-day period could miss an hour or so of instruction. So sharing that data and having those conversations with parents are key. But again, uh, November, mind you, the board meetings tonight, so I'd cut off the date, but roughly about 10 days in, you know, we're down 86% from previous year. And we're able to target those interventions for individual students. One major project that initiative that I'm currently working on is scrapping the uh, positive behavior intervention support system, the tier one, the tiger points. It was a universal system, bathroom, cafe. I want to looking at it as two different systems now, K to four and fifth through eighth. And there are uh, draft matrices now. But middle school is based on rigorous standards based on high school standards. And what we're going to do is make middle school more rigorous and have proficiency as an expectation in there as well to drive students into high school. But again, that's draft form. I am hopefully can put a, a product together to show you, but I'm very excited about that initiative as you know we set the kids up for the future. So any questions? Thank you. Thank you all. Thank each and every one of you. Okay, next we have new business update on the tentative 2022 levy maintenance. Mr. Baranek. Good evening, Board of Education, administrators, staff members, and community members. Uh, it's hard to believe that we are already at levy time. The levy is probably the most important um, financial part as far as a district can um, have year after year. Our tax levy is a request for 
taxes to Cook County, which are used to operate our school district, uh, meaning paying our teacher salary, our administrator salaries, the benefits, all of our purchase services, our supplies, and giving a high quality education to our students. So property taxes levied in 22 go to pay the expenses in 23. Uh, Cook County is very interesting this year. Uh, for those that don't know, we have received zero property taxes as of this current fiscal year. Um, taxpayers can expect to have their tax bills coming out very, very shortly here. Um, the estimate is either next week or the first week of December with payments due by the end of December. Um, our tax levy for the district is our largest source of revenue, which accounts for 70% approximately. Our levy amounts are determined by looking at fund balances, looking at our expenses year after year, looking at upcoming projects potentially in the future years. And this is analyzed uh, before going through the entire process of filing our levy. The district must look at the total EAV of our taxing body. We just received our preliminary report that came out, oh, I think it came out last week. Um, Cook County was telling us that this wasn't going to come out till December. So we're lucky that we got this. So we got our preliminary tax rate on this. And then one of the key factors that we have to look at every year is what is the new property, new EAV coming on the books? Uh, just last Friday, I went to a joint board of review meeting at the village in regards to TIFFs. Um, there is a TIFF coming off this year, the Roosevelt Road TIFF. Uh, what they're doing is, is they're pulling pin numbers off, which is going back on the books. Um, I was able to get all the pin numbers that will be coming back onto the roll for the EAV and calculate exactly what the new dollar amount that will be out there. We're roughly $5 million worth of new EAV that's coming on the books. Uh, that's a good thing. The district does get a chance to levy and capture those funds that are coming on. The only bad thing is, is that the TIF will be coming back on the roll. Um, and the TIF will be Roosevelt Road running east of 17th Street. So all of the properties that were west of 17th Street are coming back on the roll for taxes. So if we go down Roosevelt Road, they've pretty much have developed from 17th heading west to 25th Avenue. And what they're focusing on with the TIF is going from 17th East to try to freeze those properties to draw in new businesses. That's how the, the village can compete with neighboring districts and they get industry in here. Um, it's just something that they have to do to be competitive. And we want the industry in here because that's what drives our community, but it does freeze that EAV for 23 years. So in our case for this levy 22, we got 5 million new EAV coming on the books and we would like to try to capture the taxes that would be LINDOPs. Um, we are in a tax cap county. Cook County is tax capped. Um, what that means is that the district can levy what CPI, which is our inflation factor, or 5%, whichever is less. Um, CPI factor came in at 7% this year. And then because the normal 5% cap being in Cook County, that is what our tax cap would be. However, a district can levy more than 5% as long as they hold a truth and taxation hearing. And I am recommending to have that truth and taxation hearing and levy 7%. With that extra 2% on top of the 5%, that would allow us to capture the new taxes of the 5 million EAV that's coming on the books for this particular levy. Um, that's a key thing. We need to be able to capture this. Otherwise, you lose that as part of your tax base. 
if we look at trends as to what the district has done in the past, balloon levying has been the strategy used to capture all the funds that they're entitled to. All that means is that we ask for a certain amount. If we're not entitled to it, the district, I mean, not, not the district, but the county will reduce us down and get us what our property tax extension base would be um, for that annual year. If we look at what some of the figures were from our previous levy in 21, we requested 6.7 million. That's what was submitted to Cook County. When we got our final extension, it came in at 6 million. But if you remember, we did abate roughly $400,000 for the property tax extension um, grant. That's where we gave back money to the taxpayers, shifted the local tax burden from our local onto the state. So as per the code for creating our tax base, we have to add back the abatement amount. So our total tax base for our extension of 21 was 6.488. That is the figure that we are using to calculate the 7% increase, the request from the district. The estimated um, amount that um, after analyzing all of our funds and what we plan on doing in the future and to covering our expenses, it would be roughly 6.9 million. I believe that once everything is said and done with the county adding in new property, gaining those new tax dollars, lowering down different things with our request, we should be somewhere right around $7 million would be our estimate for our extension for the following school year. Um, we will levy heavy in the educational fund. The educational fund gives the district the most flexibility to be able to transfer money from fund to fund um, without being restricted. As part of a new law that was passed, Public Act 1020895, we have to disclose what our cash balances are for the district. Um, this is our cash balance from July 1. This is in the treasurer's report month after month in board book. Um, and it's also in board book year to date with it. So if you look in there, you'll see that our revenue is sitting at zero from the county um, as you go through those financial documents in board book. Uh, if you look here, um, obviously our ed fund is our largest fund that accounts for our largest fund with expenses. If you look at the levy amounts on the next page that I would be requesting, it does follow um, what our expenses are in each individual fund. With this one um, on the screen here, these would be the amounts that I would propose to request from the county. Um, if we look at the funds as we go down, Ed fund obviously is the largest and there would be a slight increase in our buildings and grounds fund due to the fact that contracts have been going up, supply costs have been going up. And this is one where we're always teetering on a very low fund balance. And this would help increase that fund balance by levying a little bit more in that one, but keeping under our maximum with our tax rate that we're allowable with. If we go down and you look at IMRF, Social Security, working cash and life safety, working cash and life safety do have caps on it. So we can't levy heavy in those with it. And then the Social Security and IMRF levying only 50,000, we have about $900,000 of fund balance in those accounts. And we do not spend anywhere near that. The IMRF stuff is for our non-certified staff, which would be our custodians, our office staff, and our paraprofessionals. We do not get anywhere near $900,000. The $50,000 that we would get from the levy, we are probably eating into the fund balance roughly sixty-five dollars to $70,000 per year as we try to lower down that fund balance because we just don't have the expenses in those accounts. As far as the legal requirements, to 
make sure that we are following what Illinois school code is. We have to make sure that um, we have a public notice. That public notice cannot be in the paper more than 14 days, but it has to be out there for at least seven. In board book, there was a pretty detailed timeline as to what our board meetings were and where the allotted public notice would be um, with it. Also in board book was all of the certificates, all of the resolutions. Those were in there for you to review um, with our levy amounts with it. And all those forms would have to be signed and submitted to Cook County. The requirement to get our levy in, it has to be in by the last Tuesday in the month of December. So we have plenty of time to get our levy in uh, with our board meeting being on the 20th of December. So pretty you know, extensive information with this levy. Um, business managers within our community are struggling with this because the CPI factor is at 7%. Um, some districts do not wanna go over the 7% because they don't wanna hold their truth and taxation hearing. They believe that they can capture everything at 5%. However, with the TIF coming off, I do believe we have to go over the 5% and add the extra two and capture those funds that are coming off. Very important thing because this is our largest source of revenue, um, like you said, and I wanted to make sure that I am networking with all the different business managers within the area, seeing what they're doing and how they're approaching it with it. And I believe with the request in this temporary request, we will capture all the funds that are out there and this would keep the district in fine, stable financial state moving forward. Is there any questions um, in regards to the proposed tax levy for 2022? I do have a question, Mr. Baranek. Um, can you talk a little bit about the meeting that was held at the village? Um, I do know that there were some questions about levying and taxpayer um, taxes not increasing. Is there a differentiation between this and the referendum? Just so everyone, we have this on the record. There is a difference between what we request with our levy. This is for our operating funds. And what we pass with the referendum is not to increase our debt service extension. That payment is locked in at 425000 no increase on that bond payment. Um, the reason that we're asking for the increase is because nothing has gone down with the inflation. Um, I'm sure you've seen it with your electric bill, your gas bills, we're the same way. Things are going up significant with it. Um, and I do wanna mention that this will not raise any taxes on the debt service extension based referendum that we passed for issuing the bonds to do our capital project and life safety work. This request is for our operating funds to be able to operate year after year with our direct salaries, benefits, supplies, um, purchase service stuff with our contracts each fiscal year moving forward. Okay, you know, thank you for that, Mr. Baranek. One more question for you. So the money that we've abated back to the taxpayers uh, was from the property tax relief grant? Correct. Okay. And we will have to do that again this year. As part of the property tax relief grant requirements, the district has to abate back two consecutive years uh, because we did receive it. So this year at, at our December meeting, we will be abating back $398,000 back to the taxpayers um, as a requirement to make sure that we continue to receive the $325,000 in our evidence-based funding state payment. There is also another property tax relief grant available in FY23. I'm going to bring that to the board also in December. This one's kind of tricky because of the amount of money that Governor Pritzker has available for it, it can go up to about $49 million. We are number 47 on the list. So depending on what other districts do ahead of us, if they don't do it, we may be able to 
abate even more and pass off more from our local taxpayers onto the state uh, with that. So that's something that will be brought forward to the board in December. So you'll be seeing two resolutions, one for the FY22 property tax relief grant, and then one for the FY23. There's no guarantee on the FY23. All we can do is submit it. And then in the end of January, the State Board of Education would notify the district if we would receive the property tax relief grant. And then we would just have to submit to the county by the end of March that we would be willing to do it. And then they would show the abatement from 22 and the abatement from 23. And our evidence-based funding formula then would get the increase with the shift from the local tax burden to whatever the state would have on it. So those are things that will be coming to the board in December about the abatements to potentially give back. One is guaranteed back to our taxpayers. The other one, I would recommend that we move forward with it. And if we potentially get it, then I would move forward with the abatement for the FY23 property tax relief grant. Any additional questions? I know it appears as though there are none, but thank you so much for the edu for the information that was presented to us. Thank you. Okay, next order of new business. We need the record rec recommended approval to close the district. Dr. Jackson. Uh, can I get a motion? I make a motion that the board approves to close the district on Tuesday, December 27, 2022 to Thursday, December 29, 2022 and Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. Can I get a second? Tanya Taylor, second. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Thank you. So this um, year we're doing the same asking or requesting as we have before. The day before is stated in the contract before or after a holiday. So that would be the 23rd, because if a holiday falls on a weekend, then we have the Friday before. And also we're falling into this for New Year's Eve. And so we would also have the, the district office and the whole building close on the 30th, as well as the day after New Year's, which is Monday the 2nd. So those are already given. We're asking, I am asking that we be able to utilize our vacation time for December 27th, the 29th and January 3rd. And the building will be closed on those days as well. Thank you. Is there any discussion? What about the 28th of December? You know what, we were leaving that in case someone just had to come in and do something, but they could still take vacation if they wanted to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because some people did want to work. Any further discussion? Uh, can we get a roll call? Board Secretary Taylor? Yay. Board Member Williams Wolford? Yay. Board President Griffin? Yay. Board Member Alexander? Yay. Board member Moore. Yay. Board, board member Dawson, absent. absent. Board vice president Hannah is absent. Absent. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Next, we have can I get an update on the National Black Child Development Institute? Absolutely. First of all, I would like to thank the community and my colleagues for granting me permission to attend this conference. When I say I was super excited to be there, I was super excited. I was um, trying to hold back texting Dr. Jackson throughout the conference, but I could not resist. <laughs> it was so much exciting things going on. Um, let me pull it up in my phone. First of all, the name of the conference was Create an equitable and just future for black children and families. Drop the mic right there. <laughs> this conference was amazing. It talked about assessments matter, 
uh, reimagining assessments that are equitable, research-based, and culturally relevant for scholars they serve. I remember as an educator, I remember, um, I forget which assessment it was, but the student was asked to tell them um, the assessor, what's a pint, to give them an example of something that's a pint. They said beer, because that's what happens in their house, right? They wanted milk, so they didn't score on that. Most Black homes, we don't buy milk in pints. We buy about a gallon. We got too many kids to feed. Nobody's buying pints of milk, but he said a pint of beer. And then another student gave a pint of oil. This there must be in that business, you know, but that's not what they was looking for. But I'm sorry, getting back to this, assessments matter, okay? Now our scholars are digital natives technology can be used with assessing students. It's reimagining culturally appropriate assessments. Of course, most of us that went to school, we didn't have the access to technology that we have now, but our children do and all these different platforms, if you imagine them almost like different countries that they utilize, um, and it's just the world that they're in, instead of looking at it negatively, because so many children are learning from TikTok and other platforms, and people are too. They're educating themselves on there. I mean, there's so much stuff on financial uh, literacy and other things now. A lot of people are using that as a platform. Talks about a play-based assessments that allow them to be assessed. Um, blacks are very good storytellers, but there's no assessments out there that allow you to tell a story to assess your knowledge, but we're exceptional storytellers. Um, also, um, I was texting Dr. Jackson because there were some power, powerful people in the room. We had um, the White House, one of the major White House uh, women who's in charge of um, the educational equity um, funding. So I text Dr. Jackson because there's money coming available for American Rescue Plan Act, a bipartisan community legislation, and the stronger um, connections. These are different funding sources that were coming up. And I text Dr. Jackson throughout to let her know this is coming up. This is where the website you go to get the money and all of that. <laughs> Um, also, um, coming soon is a large literacy, literacy initi initiative. Um, we had, um, I'm sorry, it was just so much there, but there was um, one of the presenters, they talked about educating our Black boys and looking at how was Garner theory and how our Black boys learn. And um, it was just an amazing conference. I learned so much. I shared as I got the information, texting it, emailing it to Dr. Jackson to let her know how to get this money, um, connecting her with different presenters that was there, some of these powerhouses that was there and just um, really networking. So it was a great experience. We had a gala at the African-American Museum. That was really nice. And then we had an opportunity to just explore it ourselves. And it was late at night and I just, I could not process it all. I had to stop because I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, just looking at the slave ships and everything. And I was like, I need to come during the day. It was just too late for me to emotionally process all that. And um, another, darn, I just lost my train of thought. It was another, something else that was really exciting there, but it was a really great conference. So um if you ever get an opportunity to go, I highly encourage you to, um, to go. Another um, great workshop was Black Girls Literacy, Transforming Lives and Literacy Practices. And uh, one of the workshops was, she's not bossy, she's just a future leader. So yeah, it was great. So thank you for the opportunity. And feel free, um, I got lots to talk about, so feel free to ask me any questions after, thanks. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I hope that you were able to bring back literature for you know us to review mm -hmm. as possibly something for the whole board to attend. Yeah. Thank you. I'll scan it in and send it to you guys. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Thank you, Ms. Wolford. You're welcome. Okay, next we have updating the discussion on board retreat. 
held on October 28th through the 29th. This will be individual board members given their take on it. Uh, Mr. Morris, would you like to start? I would. I would. You can go to the next one. Uh, Mrs. Alexander. Sure thing, President Griffin. Um, I just think that as this being one of the first events that I had an opportunity to attend as being on the board, it was a really good opportunity for us as a board to come together and really uh, understand some of the challenges that we face uh, here at Lindup as a community and with the board really understanding some of the challenges that um, we have with you know the students and some areas where they may fall short. But we also had an opportunity to identify some goals really uh, identify some, some strategic planning for um, some things for um, to work along with um, Superintendent Dr. Jackson, you know, to come back to the uh, to the the educators and really um, understand what you all, um, you know, they're going through and just really have, I would say, a an idea of how we can really understand that the focus is, you know, our children and what needs to be done to make sure that we as a board understand the resources um, that, that's needed, but also some of the challenges. So it's a really good opportunity for myself to, of course, connect with the other board members, you know, work alongside Dr. Jack Jackson and just plan for, you know, the, the year to come with um, any of the, um, I would say any of the goals and just some of the positive that we expect to see moving forward. Thank you. Um, next up would be myself. I saw it as a great opportunity for us to basically assess a lot of board members' strengths and some of the weaknesses. But at the same time, at the end of the day, we were taught that our initial focus is on the children. And at that point, we started to strategize on how do we go about improving areas that need improvement. And it was also a time for us to bond with one another, which was also a good thing. Tanya Taylor, I just wanna thank the community, the staff and the actual admin team for giving us the opportunity as a board to get together. We do need to you know, get together and talk amongst ourselves in a small meeting. Um, it was very informative and it was a good time. Thank you so much. I did all everything they just said. And I look forward to the follow-up that we have planned for December 3rd. I am a data-driven, loving data person. And so <laughs> December 3rd is talking about that data. And I love it because data, you know, is what drives everything. When you look at the data, you can create um, very strategic interventions to support students and uh, create greater outcomes. So I'm looking forward to the follow-up and us digging really deep into this data and really impacting student achievement over this um, next school year and beyond. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Um, I thought this was by far one of the best uh, retreats uh, that I had attended and everyone's input was just valuable, uh, recognizing that we have differences, but at the end, we want to focus on that 70% of our children who are not meeting standards. And so that for me was an amazing uh, takeaway. I came right back to the team and I uh, began talking to them and just saying, let's get busy, let's go. We have our marching orders, let's do it. And uh, we are all excited about it. So thank you for listening and for um, supporting. Thank you. Thank you. And next up, I need an approval to adopt the 2022-2023 board goals and strategic priorities. Tanya Taylor, I make a motion that the board approves and adopt the 2022-2023 board goals on strategic priorities as agreed upon at the board retreat. Can I get a second? I second. Thank you. Discussion? Okay, since there is none, can I get a roll call? Board Member Williams Wilford? Yay. Board President Griffin? Yay. Board Member Alexander? Yay. Board Secretary Taylor? Yay. Board Member Morris? Yay. Board Vice President Hannah? Absent. 
Board Member Dawson, absent. Thank you, motion passes. Uh, next, we have a discussion on Consortium of State School Board Associations Conference. That would be myself and Dr. Jackson, please. Yes, and so uh, for the new consortium, do we have any? They should have, so on board book, there is um, an outline of what the consortium does, and it is for uh, urban boards of education. Typically, um, you all have uh, been so gracious to allow us to attend CUBE, which is the Council of Urban Boards of Education. Uh, Cassava is a different one, but it also recognizes that. And so if you would take a look at the information for uh, the organization and maybe see if it's something that you want to do later, or maybe a couple people go and see it, it is in March. And this will be the first time since Illinois pulled away from uh, the National School Board Association. Uh, were there any questions or discussions? What are the dates in March? March 31st to April 2nd. I'm sorry. And can you tell us any highlights about this organization? How long they've been in existence? Um, Okay, so the services that are provided, um, annual leadership training and networking, association leadership and executive symposium held in January for incoming state board presidents, presidency elect and state executives, um, federal Ad advocacy conference, which is held each fall in Washington, DC, uh, staff collaboration, network communications, search services, executive government affairs, centralized, repository of resources for use by state associations, federal legal advocacy, urban schools alliance, focus on issues and resources to support challenges that schools face and professional development and networking for state association uh, members and also leadership. How long have they been around? Mm -hmm. and just, if you don't have that information, that's okay. I'll do it later. I'll get back to you if you don't mind. Thank <laughs> you. That's fine. I had one question. Now, will we gain our professional development points as we did previously? Uh, that would be through IASB. And because IASB is going under this, it would be the same. There's nothing in writing with that, but there has been conversation that okay. it would be. At your next director's meeting, will you also see right. if you can get some additional information? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, were there any other questions or concerns? No. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jackson wants to give us an update on the WASED conference that she recently attended. So the WASED conference was amazing, except it was colder in Arizona than it was in Chicago. And so that was a little bit of a surprise. It was 54 degrees down there and it was 70 here. Yep. Um, so I was not prepared at all. Um, so that is myself and Steve Wozniak. Uh, they also did a, a press release uh, on us. We were uh, out of 42 uh, school districts. We were in that number to receive WAS pathway status. Uh, and there uh, were people from New York, from Florida, from uh, New Orleans. They were just from an abundance of amount of different places and areas. But what we were able to do was look at how they were implementing their information uh, with STEAM and to also make sure that uh, we could uh, share ideas with them. We will be partnering with the uh, Maywood School District 89. They are the largest urban school district to have uh, WASED in their school. And uh, we are going to take it on the road. We will also be presenting at Triple I on, uh, on WASED. So thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? I just wanted to say congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations for Lundon. Thank you yes. for supporting. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next, we have the board president report, which I will be giving that. And what I would like to report on was the community breakfast that the mayor held this past Saturday. And that was truly an enlightening event because it gave us a chance to network myself and other board members but also it gave us the chance to talk to the community to find out what they felt were the needs that we really needed to be addressing. And several members expressed an interest in assisting the school being volunteers in different areas. So to me, that was another big plus because to have the community to assist us, that goes back to sort of like the village involved in the raising of a child. And that was my really, really big take on it. Thank you. Uh, next up is our superintendent report, Dr. Jackson. Yes, and so once again, we will post the scripts of Spelling Bee, and this will be our second time. Um, right. it, and it is really, so what is so monumental about this, not that it's just Lindop's second time, it is the second time that it has only been held in an African-American school district. And so that is something uh, to be proud of. All right, and so we're looking forward to that. On the 13th, we have our little spellers already um, uh, working on their, their words and studying. They'll be studying over the break and the actual spelling bee will happen in March and you will have additional information. Uh, next, we have our pinata contest. And so I'm just always amazed at how creative they are with your pinatas and um, looking for candy. That's me looking for candy, but from them. But they have an amazing time. They're, in, they're talking about colors. They're doing science in there as well. And they are measuring. And so all parts of the curriculum are coming into those finished products. Very proud of them. Unity Day. Unity Day, uh, we had a program where everyone uh, pledged uh, to unite and to be kind to one another and just to come together. And so we were also very, very excited about that as well and the children as well as the staff signing off on that. Uh, teacher in service. We did have teacher in service and this was right after uh, the board retreat. And so that is just a picture of me saying, the, the iron is hot, we have to strike it now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, and so it was uh, well received and uh, everyone is just looking forward to the outcomes that we're going to have on this and working together. Our community district relations on the 22nd of October, uh, Black Men United came out and here's just some of the, uh, the photos and everything. And so thank you again, Mr. Morris, for also for making this happen. But as we looked at this, so many uh, people participated. It probably, I don't remember the exact number, do you, Mr. Kenobi? No, it's okay. It was, it's okay. But it was a wrapped around the corner. No, that's 187 nice. people did come out. And so it was an amazing time. People went away with a lot of things that they needed. And it was really just a blessing to the community. If I can add, um, I was woken that morning with text messages from community members texting me pictures. Look what they put out. The sign that said the line starts here. So people started texting me at six in the morning. I'm like, okay. So they were excited. So that was really good. Very much. Yes, and next we had Trunk or Treat. So Trunk or Treat um, was our uh, fall harvest and uh, PTSO uh, uh, spearheaded this event along with Mr. Kenobi who works with them quite frequently. In fact, all of the time, not just quite frequently, but they did have Trunk or Treat and it was amazing, an amazing turnout for that as well. Uh, community District Relations, CNN Top 10 Heroes for 2022. Mm. Uh, Ms. Deborah Vines, who uh, does our, uh, with an answer ink and comes in and presents bullying and has the program in the uh, school. She was nominated for CNN Top Heroes for 2022. So we've been voting every day. You get to cast 10 votes every day. If you need to have additional information, you have the link. We'll make sure to get it out to you. 
Okay. Next we have, um, we are beginning. So as I also promised that I would go back and speak with parents, I've been having meeting with parents thus far uh, of the eighth grade students just beginning there, but also talking about mentor mentorship for our boys. And uh, so there is gonna be two fall. It's really going to be a, a collaboration between Black Men United, uh, Inter, no, not InterVision International, that's the Wayne Bryant, uh, Victor Woods with Success International. And also we have uh, two of our gentlemen from the Park District who are also gonna come over and participate in this. Uh, we are looking to make sure that they have some strengths, some people that they can relate to. And Victor Woods was here just the other day. Uh, in fact, yesterday he was here and did a small presentation with the sixth through eighth grade, just talking to them and asking um, how many of them were interested. We had already had a list of the ones that were going to be required, but it was really good to see them just raising up their hands without you having to sort of push them up there to go. And so we really think this is going to be amazing. Um, he has a, a story here and it just grabs their attention. He has come out, um, got into trouble a while ago, has come out and has done uh, public speaking for the last probably about 25 years um, and just encouraging people to say, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can. And so stay encouraged. All right. And he's also being nominated for an Emmy. Uh, the Midwest Emmys, and so that'll happen on December 3rd, downtown Chicago. Staff Spotlight, so excited about this. Um, Mr. Champion, Coach Champion and Coach Nichols, um, they came and they said, you know, I really want to have a meeting with you, and I'm thinking like, okay, what are we doing? I want some more sports things, or what's going on? But what they wanted to talk about is they're beginning uh, to work on how they incorporate PE into Blue Ribbon. And so I was so excited about that because now it's just going full speed ahead uh, with Blue Ribbon and every discipline is in here and doing their part. And I was like, just totally shocked over it, but they have been working with Dr. Betts as well. And so they're uh, aligning their practices to what they have to do to make sure that we're stronger when we talk to Mr. Vega, from uh, the Illinois, I mean, sorry, the Blue Ribbon Schools of Excellence. And we will be meeting with him again soon, uh, showing him the progress that we've made and then reporting out, uh, hopefully in the December meeting about where we need to go and how we've been doing. But we have been going, um, increasing constantly. And Mrs. Opare Sephora has been doing an amazing job just making sure that as soon as we're implementing something that that information is sent back to the Blue Ribbon Schools of Excellence. So we're on our way. Oh, Hello, this is Coach Nichols, Coach Champion. We are doing our spotlight on success and we would like to thank the board for allowing us to do a video and all our administration team, Dr. Jackson. And we wanna kind of tell our vision for our PE and how to make it Blue Ribbon along with the rest of the school. So Coach Champion is gonna kind of go over some of the key points and I might uh, jump back in there and see what happens here. So basically the premise of this with uh, Linda Opp going for Blue Ribbon, Coach and I were trying to figure out what are some different ways that we can help support as our class is a lot different, obviously, than your math, your writing, all those type of stuff, and your reading. So we are kind of looking at uh, the Illinois Association for Health, PE, Recreation and Dance came up with a program, Blue Ribbon PE, that allows us to spotlight our PE program. So we go through and we do a self-survey and we see what our weaknesses are, our strengths are, how we can improve and we kind of continue to work towards getting that blue ribbon status for PE. It allows us to highlight the importance of PE, allows us to show the exemplary things that we do in PE and then we'll be able to continue to work on that. And our hope is after a year or so that we'll reach Blue Ribbon PE here at Lindop, but along also then eventually move into our health too, because they do also allow, uh, have a Blue Ribbon P Health Award as well. So we want to get the whole wellness department of PE and health and all that to come together with the Blue Ribbon. And we think this really helps support our school's Blue Ribbon because it shows that all departments are really together with this and that we are working together as a school to not only highlight Blue Ribbon as a school overall, but also with the PE and the health and wellness program. And we have a conference that we go to yearly and they do offer um, presentations at those conferences. So once we get confident in 
our blue ribbon status, then maybe we can also present at our conference so that other schools are seeing that we're doing great things over at Lindop School. So we look forward to uh, hopefully here in the next year or so, maybe that we can come back to the Board of Education and we can present with a banner and all these different things to highlight that we have received Blue Ribbon PE and that we are working towards hopefully getting Blue Ribbon Health as, as well as that. So we thank you for allowing us to share a little bit about our information. We're sorry we can't be there. We are actually coaching a basketball game right now at Kamark. So go Tigers. Yeah. So, but thank you so much, Board of Education, District and School Administration. And we hope you have a great night. Thank have you. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay, last but not least, National Board Member Day. So I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time out, for always being supportive, for just seeing the big picture and always making sure that Linda students and families have exactly what they need. And so with that, if you see the bunk cakes, that is your National Board Member Day gift from us and so thank you so much and thank you for serving thank you thank you, thank you. okay last thing on my list to do is that we have a birthday to celebrate tonight too and so i would just like to recognize our board president miss griffin and say thank you happy 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 birthday to you thank you Thank each and every one of you. This has been a great day for me. Thank you. Glad we can have it and a board meeting on your birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Wasn't my first choice, but <laughs> now we have our committee reports. First being the personnel committee meeting with whom myself and Ms. Alexander are the chair and co-chairs. Next meeting date is to be determined. The finance committee meeting, which is myself, which is the next meeting date is to be determined. PACE governing board meeting, Mr. Dawson and Mr. Morris was Wednesday, October 19th. Um, do you have an update on that? Okay, the next meeting date is Wednesday, November 16th at 6 p.m. Safety SEL committee meeting, Mr. Morris, Mr. Hanna. Next meeting date is to be determined. Policy committee meeting, Mr. Dawson, Ms. Williams Wolford. The meeting was October the 12th, 2022. Do you have any updates on that? We yes. didn't meet because we're waiting on a policy to come through. It's normally um, kind of delayed around this time. And so we believe we'll probably be meeting um, next month. Okay, thank you for the update. I see that your next meeting date is to be determined. Next, there is the para CIA committee meeting, which there is Mr. Morris and Ms. Taylor. Your next meeting date is to be determined. Next is the excuse me, technology committee meeting, which is Mr. Hannah and Ms. Taylor. Next meeting date is to be determined. Strategic planning committee meeting. Ms. Williams Wolford, the next meeting date is to be determined. Community Engagement Committee meeting, myself and Ms. Alexander, we're, hope, we're the chairs for that. And that meeting date is to be determined. And that would be the end of our committees. Are there any public comments? No, there are no. Thank you. Now I need a motion to go into executive session. Tanya Taylor, I move that the board goes to close section, section under 5 Illinois School Code 120-2C1 to discuss the appointment, employment compensation, discipline, or performance at 6.54 p.m. Second. Okay, we are now. Can we get a roll call? For President Griffin. Yay. Board Member Alexander. Yay. Uh, Vice President Hanna, absent. Mm -hmm. Board Member Dawson, absent. Yeah. Board Member Morris. Yeah. Board Secretary Taylor. Yay. Yeah. Board Member yeah. williams Wolfer. Yay. Yeah. We are now convening out of open session. And before you leave, I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming here, especially Miss Alexander's family. We are so proud of her.
now. Um, have you taken your pictures already with your family? Okay, we are now out of open session. So everyone is free to leave and thank you. Yeah.